Thank you uh, to the gentleman from Georgia. Would like to recognize now my friend from Kansas, Mr. Estes, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Director Young, for being here. I know it's been a long day for you and uh, some of us coming in and out and, and going through the process. So I, I just I want to skim surface on two or three things and then a deep dive on a, on a couple. I mean, one of the things that we, when we did the Pass the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was intentionally addressing companies being motivated to leave the United States because of taxes. And uh, we were seeing a lot of inversions, and even the uh, uh, Obama administration, President Obama, before, uh, before President Trump came in, was talking about how bad inversions were. And since Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was passed in 2017, there have been no inversions companies leaving the United States through that process. And that was, that was the intention of making sure that we do that. So I, I, I'm really concerned, some of the things in the budget, going through and, and adding taxes back and, and, and defeating some of the, the value that was in that program of helping, helping make companies stay here. And, and particularly, as, as we've talked about, I mean, one of the things talk about raising a trillion dollars from the global minimum tax uh, under the theory that it would, it would uh, prevent a race to the bottom in taxes around the world, when, when in reality, the underreporting process is going to allow other countries who've passed that law, uh, which nothing's been brought before Congress yet, uh, to, to be able to change the U.S. tax law uh, to, to have that process. So I, I'm really concerned that uh, the numbers in here for revenue are going to be worse than what, uh, what moves forward. And part of the reason why that bothers me is, you know, this past year, or this current year, we are borrowing one out of every five dollars that we spend. I mean, one out of every five dollars is spent. And the budget that's proposed for next year, one out of every four dollars it's spent is borrowed. And, and it, to me, it looks like, uh, as I go through the math, um, you're, you're, you're saying that the deficit's reduced by three trillion dollars, but I, I just don't see that. When I look at the numbers, I, I look at, on, on S1, the, the table in, in the budget, and it talks about uh, a 1.5 trillion dollar deficit this year, Next year that goes up, the next year it goes up. Uh, a couple of years are, are stable, uh, right about the same as this year, but then it goes up and goes up and goes up. And, and you know, over the 10 year period on that table S1, it says that the deficit's increasing by $17 trillion. So I, I'm wondering how you, wh where the claim is that it's $3 trillion less when it's, when it's going up $17 trillion over the 10 years. Congressman, if you look on S2, we have a lot of S tables, I have to point out. If you look on S2, uh, at the bottom, total proposals in the 2024 budget shows the year-over-year -year deficit uh, reductions, and it adds to uh, $2.9 trillion, the nearly $3 trillion we've talked about uh, over uh, many hours in this room. Right, but if you look at the debt, actually continues to go up, which means we're not, that's more of a reflection of, just because we didn't raise the deficit $20 trillion, we can't claim that as a $2.9 trillion savings because we are raising the deficit by $17 trillion. You, you can. I mean, the deficit, yearly deficits, yearly, uh, feed into the debt. And you can't make deficits worse. Uh, it will make the debt problem worse. So it absolutely uh, does help get our fiscal house in order to save $3 trillion with the president's policies. It, but it doesn't save $3 trillion. It just means we spend $3 trillion less than we could have spent and other avenue the because the, the debt actually continues to go up uh, in this in this uh, next 10 years the breakdown for that so I know I know a lot of discussion around that I, I just I, I don't understand that math that process going through there I do want to hit one other quick point I, I know this is a real quick to go through in five minutes and you, you've been hit with a lot of different issues but one of the things we talked about earlier was Social Security and um, I, I don't see anywhere where the president proposes to save anything on Social Security. I mean, we look at, you know, all the projections are out there that within 10 years, uh, it'll the trust fund will be depleted, that at that point in time, the projections are that it'll be a 23% cut in payments, monthly payments. So if you're making $1,000 a month in your Social Security payment, you'll, you'll drop down to $770. So w what has the president done to fix that? So Congressman, as we sit here in 2023, uh, we absolutely, the budget speaks to this, want to work with people in Congress uh, who have solutions for uh, the, the trust fund uh, running out of solvency in 2033. 
Uh, today, unfortunately, uh, we believe that the largest crisis is those who have, as uh, the ranking member pointed out, have policies that would cut Social Security benefits. This budget says the president will not do that. Okay, so so if I look at this, there's really nothing in there that helps Social Security over the over the next ten years. So we have, we have to do that work. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank the gentleman.